Okay, it's been a minute since uh, some fishing videos, and that's because I got a little boat project on the go. So, bought a boat, know the engine, sound like there's some issues with it. Compression's good, so after that it's just kind of parts and stuff, so. Uh, brought it home, there's definitely some carb settings that needed adjustments. Eleanor's gonna help me, hey? <laughs> so, anyways, I've already done... Uh, <laughs> some diagnostics on this so i'm just going to kind of show you how i went through it um so this one's with the i know i needed a switch box so i got the new part and we'll kind of go through the diagnostic of it and then put the new part in and see what happens so this is the motor it is a 1986 mercury 90 horse uh six cylinder the tower of power so this is what we're going to be working on all right so, I just got a little spark tester. It's going to kind of show you here. We'll maybe start on one that I know is good. So, let's start on cylinder one here. Make sure we got our sparks. Can I turn the key yet? Do not turn the key yet. No, you'll zap dad. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hook that up. It's not funny, you'd electrocute me. <laughs> okay so cylinder one you saw the spark how that worked this is i already know this is my dead cylinder there's no spark so <laughs> we're gonna i'll show you what that looks like so just stay back sweetie i'm just gonna turn the boat on stay there All right, I'll double check the video and I'm assuming there's no spark. Okay, so kind of how this works and how I figured this out is, you know, obviously there's no spark to this one. So it's got to come from somewhere behind it, obviously. All these seem to have the same spark uh, and this one just had no spark. So you go back, follow, which one is it? Oh, it's this one here, second pack. So it's either the ignition coil or if you follow back, it's the green and white. It comes into here. So it could be the switch box or it could be, well, this is supposed to be white, the white wire coming from the trigger. So it could be the trigger. So what I did was I just moved this white wire up to, I changed it with the green and violet and voila we had spark so then i didn't know if it was the trigger so i put the trigger wire up to that one as well and i still had spark i put these two down to that one and did not have spark on that cylinder so basically i knew i was getting good uh good trigger and the ignition coil was good because when I switched it, it worked. And anytime I hooked anything up to this switch box off uh, this section here, it would not work. So obviously there is an issue with the switch box. So I got the part. We're going to pop all this off and put the new one on and see what happens. All right, got the new switch box on. Everything's hooked up, everything's labeled correctly. It was exactly like uh, the other one. This one looks like a good quality too. I'll just show you the brand it is. It is uh, EMP, Engineered Marine Products. It's probably like, you can tell it's heavy and, and good quality. So we'll see how it works. Yeah. Do it again. Keep it going. Yep. Okay, we're just gonna check cylinder one again. Now that I switch it, see what the sparks like. Okay, turn it over. Okay. Spark seems about the same on both. Hopefully that's good. Okay, so I just looked it up. I do have spark there now. But I also just checked the spark on another section off that pack and this one still seemed weaker. So what I did is I took this plug 
because this is the one off s pack this is the one with the weak spark i put my test spark tester in there and grounded it to this plug it was weak i switched it and grounded it to this plug and it seemed a little bit stronger so i'm wondering if because of the weak fire no fire maybe something there was an issue with the plug too so i'm gonna pull both plugs because they're the same ones i'm gonna check the resistance uh, in them and see if there's an issue with that plug as well all right so the one on the left was from cylinder one that one was firing good looks a little scored um the one out of cylinder two looks wet so anyways i'm going to test the resistance in them and they also look like different plugs so might be also time for just new plugs all around i think okay so I tested the resistance in these. There's no like short out, like what you basically do is you put your ohm meter on here and then the point at the end, you should get some resistance. There's definitely resistance there. This, the reading was back and forth. It was hard to get just a steady reading. Um, you can also test on the sides here to here and just make sure that there is no, it shouldn't get a reading at all because it should all be sealed off. So it was good that way. Um, but yeah. I'll probably end up just getting new, new plugs and rechecking that, but I'm gonna fire it up and just see how it sounds compared to how it did uh, before I did all this. test there like obviously it fired up it ran good uh it sounded a little bit more snappy uh in the throttle which is a good thing probably is getting better spark i mean that ignition like even at i just tested it at a an idle and that one was bad so who knew what the the rest of the pack was like uh once it was throttled up we might have started losing spark and the other two cylinders uh with that pack too um, so it sounds good right now. I'll probably like double check the timing and all that as well too on it. And uh, put new plugs in. And we'll take it from there. I got a, uh, the rear water jacket seal is uh, leaking just a little bit. So I'll probably still take it out and test it. But I ordered the part for that. So that'll get done at some point. But uh, currently shouldn't affect the way it runs. So yeah. That was a quick, easy swap over. It took me, I don't know, 20 minutes. So we will see if that fixes the change because basically what it was doing was when I took it out, um, it would idle up, run yeah, pretty decent in the driveway. It seemed like it didn't quite have the snap. It should have. But when I took it out, fired up, and then once you put it in gear under load, uh, as soon as you start idling up, it starts to die right away. So kind of seemed like it was basically flooding itself out. It seemed like it just wasn't getting the spark that it needed to keep the motor going. Um, didn't sound like a miss, it was just a complete power loss. So I knew that pack was bad. There still could be other issues with it, but just tracing back, I knew right away that that uh, switch box uh, was an issue. So put a new one on that already sounds, sounds better. Um, so I'll have to take it out. Uh, I did a resistance test on the stator. It seems good, but I don't know how to do a DVA test. Um, that would be the other test to do, but one test I can do is just put it on the lake and see how she goes. Okay, so this is the timing advance. So it was just sitting back like that. It's actually supposed to be pulled up and touching. You can see that far stopper there. So as the throttle goes forward, it's supposed to move with it. And then when you hit, I don't know what, three quarters, kind of closer to full throttle, this top one butts out up there. So it was just sitting here. As I put the throttle forward, it, it wasn't even touching. So I'll just put the throttle all the way forward and we'll see that it's still sitting there. Okay, so it's in full throttle advance. You can see that this hasn't even moved. So for whatever reason, I, I kind of worked a little bit and it seems to move move a little bit here. So I'm thinking that's definitely part of some of the issue why it's 
it's not picking up in gear under load. It's the timing advances and moving. So I'll have to pull all that off and see why it's not not moving or why it's sticky, I guess, because that should just freely go forward um, all the time. But like I said, I was gonna redo the full timing anyways. This one's nice. It's uh, got the markers already here and I already double checked. I put this, it's got the marker on zero and when I put it on zero, uh, cylinder one was right up to the end. So it's obviously top dead center for piston one. So should be easy once I get the timing light to uh, figure that out and set the timing in the advance on it. I'll probably add this into this video maybe. It's a new day. We're gonna tackle this timing thing. We're gonna get into this and see why it's the timing's all sticky. mud okay uh, that, this looks like it's literally just packed with mud or something I have to check into that but I'm gonna guess it's probably why it's sticking get all that cleaned out you can see like some of this crap up in there. I don't know if you can see that, there's a little bit of dirt like in there too, so I'm gonna blow all the clean this out and blow it all out. Alright, so when I was first looking at this, like it looked very like built so i was like is it like silicone that just got like dirty over it but no started like pulling it apart and it's actually like there's a bug it's like some type of a cocoon i don't know if you can really see that there but anyways that's good so i was worried that like somebody tried to fix something and i'm gonna have to refix something but Anyways, I'm going to pop all this out and I'm just going to blow it out with the air nozzle and see how it works after that. Okay, this is the little bug here. I don't know, I've never seen anything like it. Got a little pack of this out. It looked like they're like hived into this, so 
I just thought I'd share this. It's kind of interesting. You can see how they're in separate compartments. <laughs> I don't know if you know what these are. Comment. Kind of interested. Okay, so I'm just going to advance the throttle all the way here. And we're just going to see how this timing all moves. I'm pretty excited if that's all that is. Well, I can already tell that's hitting the advanced stop and it seems like it is moving a-okay. It's a little bit of rub on the top wire here. I think I'm going to bend that little tab down a little bit just to give it a little bit more clearance there. But yeah, looks like everything's moving in there the way it should be. It moves smooth. It moves with the throttle. It's nice and quick. So I'm still going to set the timing today, so that'll probably be the next thing on the list of things you'll see. Okay, so I just kind of bent that tab down and opened it up a little bit. It obviously still keeps it off the flywheel here and just it, it seems to move a lot more freely and in, in that uh, wire underneath has a little bit better distance from the flywheel. So everything looks like it's moving good there. So cool. Okay, so I was just checking all the idle adjustments on the carbs. And so the top one was about three turns out. The middle one was a turn and a half and the bottom one was about two and a half. So they're supposed to be somewhere between a turn and a half. So I set them all to a turn and a half, tried to fire it up, it wouldn't fire up. So I had to kind of kick them open more. So I'm just kind of playing around with that, but thinking that the cars might uh, need a, a rebuild or a good clean as well too. Something might be plugged. So I'm just gonna tinker on that for a few minutes and we'll see. Okay, so I adjusted everything. Um, backed all the, uh, those adjustment screws off. Got them to one and a half. It just, it seemed like in an idle, it was still a little bit choked out. It seemed to run the smoothest, uh, closer to a full two turns out. So that's where they, they all actually seemed like that. Um, so. Just gonna hook up the timing light and check that now and see where everything's at with that. All right. This is the timing light. It's got a little indicator right to the plug. So it goes on number one. Just like so. Gonna hook this up to the negative. This up to the positive. I'm just gonna plug it into that and then fire it up. Okay, so I went and added uh, a couple lines on here. This will be my max one. This is uh, 18 uh, degrees before. And this one's about four degrees um, after. So I checked the originally with the timing light in uh, at an idle, and I'm either seeing that little groove there or the one that's uh, right on the timing marker right now. So I just put these other marks on there so I can know where I'm at. So let's check her again. Okay, so I already know my timing's out a little bit at a idle. I am getting about five degrees uh, before top dead center. And it's supposed to be about four degrees after at an idle. So I'm just gonna back these off of this 3 8 uh, nut here and the 7 16 So this is the, uh, the idle one. So I'm just gonna screw it in so I can advance the timing. I guess back it off, I guess. Yeah, back it off. Time in. Another like tip for that too is you just pull that bolt out of the throttle arm there and that uh, makes that easier to, to run. You'll definitely have to do that to get it into uh, to check your max timing. But you can still fire it up and do your uh, idle timing without unhooking that. The, the max timing, it wasn't really going forward anyway, so it wouldn't have made a big difference. But anyways, when I did check it where it was set at, 
I'm gonna guess it was probably like 40 degrees before and it's only supposed to be about, I don't know, a, from what I've read around 20-ish. So got it set to like 19 right now. Um, yeah, adjusted the idle screws in there. They were kind of all out of whack. Um, still kind of query if there's maybe not some like jet issues with it, but I don't know. I think I might take it out again. We'll see. <laughs> All right. We're going to pop it in the lake and see how she goes. I'm just going to leave it on the trailer and I'll just leave the straps on and everything and just back her in and put some load on it and see how it runs. All right, let's fire her up. I optimistically brought my fishing rod because that'd be pretty sweet. Alright, sounds like she's pretty much primed. Alright, let's put her in gear and see what she does. dying under that. Are we gonna pull it out and put her in? Moment of truth. starving for fuel because when I was doing it you know I was pumping the bulb and you know it wasn't doing anything but the bulb also like I know it definitely doesn't feel like the one in my other boat like where it feels right full but it never did so uh, it could be an issue with that um, I do have a spare ball but maybe do a line too while I'm at it um, but man you could see when I got out here it was like glass and look at it now it was uh, tricky loading the boat. It's only the second time I loaded this. So just trying to figure out my depth on the trailer and getting it on there. You can see like the bumper bars are, this trailer is not meant for this boat. So I'm gonna have to do some doctoring on those. But got her in, got off at a good time. Caught one fish on camera and I had another one that I, I didn't film. But anyways, bye-bye. <laughs>